block. We'll try and split it up over a few videos. So the first one will be just machining the basic outside the measurements. The next one will be doing the bores and depending on how time goes, starting to drill all the holes all around it. So the first step in machining your casting like this is to determine exactly where you need to to set yourself up some data measures. So because our holes for our bores have been cast into the cylinder, we have to work off a rough idea where the centre of those are. So I've done some quick numbers and I need... These first few steps are going to be done in our horizontal mill. So, just going to hold it tight to do this. It's only a rough casting, so it's not going to hurt too much. Hold it in the face. You may notice I've got the aluminum soft jaws in, just to protect the jaws from bites. Of course it is a rough cast and there's going to be a few bumps and I am going to get some pieces on it. And I've lost my scribe block. So the dealer said to protect the vice, because the casting does have a few lumps and bumps because it is a rough casting. I don't want to put any impressions of those into the jaws. So I'll just run like that. The other one you might do as it's proceeding. To get it set up reasonably right, just go to Run the scribe block along it, make sure we're in reason. A little bit of a high spot there, but that's okay, the rest of it's pretty good. So, it's the first time our machine drum today, so it's always a good idea just to let them warm themselves up at a slow speed, we can still carry away. So I'll just warm up for a couple of minutes, let you all get up through the bottom of the I have to move a couple of people. Damaging the earrings by going too fast, too quickly. The machines are warmed up, so now I'll take our first cut. Hopefully you can hear the machine is not too hard.
Ters Trikat'tan. So now we have an edge that we can work on to start measuring things out and getting things to size. So I'll just give this a quick rub with a file to take any sharp edges off so we're going to cut ourselves and then work out which edge we want to do next. So I'm actually thinking that I might do the sides of the cylinder next. So we we'll just do a quick work here. It's currently 109 and a half. So we got a 3mm side to take off. Yeah, so we went 2.5mm on the first side and we did right. Okay, I should also say that this vice has been dialed in. Whenever I dial a vice, I always do it so that the needle doesn't move us along the length of the back jaw. So I'll just clean it off. I try not to use compressed air around machines as much as possible. And I always do the final clean of jaws with my fingers because you'll end up picking up a lot more with your fingers and the rag. You'll get all the fine particles in the rag with this. So we'll just sit him in there like that and we'll see how he cleans. Looks to be cramping well, but I had to wiggle it to get it to sit hard on the fence at all. So we'll take a cut there and then check it where it's going to go. I should have put the soft jaw in the front. Actually, the soft jaw in the front might be for The joys of editing is like sitting in the front of the front. Put our soft jaw in, give it a bit of wiggle, get it hard up against that nice square back jaw. We also want to be about even in front and back, about even in front and back. These are the roughest part of the car so that's where they've been fed. Now 
That's all done, so we'll just take our burrs off again. There we go. You might have noticed I said to take off two and a half when I worked out I probably should be taking three. And if you're wondering why that is, it's purely because I don't just want to allow for any um, discrepancies in the service to casting. So it's possible I was measuring on a high spot. And I've have done I've done it before. I've measured off a high spot, double checked everything, took the cut and then worked out it was a massive mistake. Because I ended up with a casting that was too small. So what I'm gonna do this time is just had a few bits of crap stuck in the corner of that vice, so I just wanted to clear them out with that nice sharp edge. Now before I was setting up in the middle of the vice, this time I want to set up out the edge of the vice a little bit. So we'll put our top screw back in. That way, when I set up, I can actually have a, can get the measuring tools underneath it to measure a pump. Just going to wind him out, just to make sure. Okay, so that's our first cut on that side done. So same as last time, we just want to check it for square. And we'll knock our burr off. Run our hands down just to make sure it's all clean. And yep, we're square. So now we need to start working to a measurement. So what we're going to do is just come in. I might finish these with micrometers, but we'll do this measurement with verniers. So at the moment we're 105.5. Okay, so 105.5 on here. And our target size is 104.35. So we can take off another 4 mil and then we'll just take a slight, really small pass just to finish at the size. Alright, so that cut's done, so we'll just do a quick measure again. Now I did talk about using mics to finish this off, but these verniers are very accurate for, and well within reason for doing these, this sort of job. If it was a press fit or a clearance fit or something like that, we'd be using mics. But this just has to slide down between the frames, don't we? So that's 104.52. And we need to get to 104.35. So 
So you got 0.17 to take off. Now this is an imperial machine with imperial dial, so if we divide that by 25.4, it means we need to take off 6.7 thou. So if we take off 6 thou, we should be good. And that should be our sixth out. So I'll reset our machine. We'll take that cut. Okay, so we finished that cut. So we'll just do a quick double last check of the measurement before we take it out of the vise. Making sure our jaws are sitting nice and flat. Okay, that's time I got 4.2. But I think I opened the jaws up a little bit as I pulled it out. So I'll just double check. Yep, so we're still on 4.2. So we need to take off another 2 thou to get within tolerance. So, let's take off another two thou. Alright, so that was our two thou pass done. I'm not recording all these because I'm running out of battery. I'm down to no battery. Which is really going to be a bit of a pain in the neck. And so now, we must have had a bit of something under one of the jaws measuring before. So, we're about a thou under the size of the one. So we can live with that. A little bit of clearance won't hurt because they are going to be painted before the cylinder, frames are being painted before the cylinders fit. So now that that's out, we'll just deburr it. I'll give it a quick check and we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, so that slid between the frames nicely where it needs to go. And by the time the frames get painted, even if the light undercoat and the sides of these get painted with an undercoat, we should be right. So the next face we're going to do is a sim this top. Just make sure it's down nice and hard. Nice soft hammer, don't want to use a hard hammer for it. Oh, that's going to work. And with this one we only have to take off half a mil from the highest point. So we'll just take this down. Okay, so hit the camera. So I'll just make sure that's our highest point. Yeah, so take a off there. Yep, so that's going to be our, we're going to call our highest point. And then, of course, this is a. Oh yeah, so we're back. So the camera went flat during that one. So we've taken a half mil off that face. Down the size, so we've now got four of our six sides machined. So we're going to whip the octaver off. Okay, so now that we've got those four sides machined, all we have to do is machine those down. Now to do these, we can hold it a couple of different ways. We can hold it like that, which, is, which means you're only going to be clamping on that little piece there. Or we can hold it like that, which means we're going to get a nice solid clamp up both sides. The only problem with that way is we can't, we have to use a square to get it set up that way. But if you hold it like that, we've got a full clamp it there. So I'm probably going to go that way. And what I'll do, we'll put a spacer in here so that we're holding 
on this part of the casting, not on the machine bit down at the bottom. So after having a quick rethink, I'm going to hold it like this because I still need to adjust that for square. If we go this way, we still have to go four and a half for square. So we may as well hold it like this, nice to good solid edges, and we can then square up here to get that right. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take, put a little bit of pressure on the vise, come in here with our square and check that's right. Now, something that I'll show a long time ago is that it can be very hard to see. Because there's no white background, so it's very hard to see a gap there. So what we do, we put a piece of paper in behind it. That just gives us a nice contrast, and we can then square it up. And the got to go a little bit. Okay, that's it there. Yeah. We'll just lock him down so he can't go anywhere. The other way we could do it is we could put a dial indicator on here and dial that face in. Right at the end of the day. That square is going to be close enough. Then from here the process is basically the same as all the other sides. Do a quick double check of our numbers. Right, 
so that's 92. Yeah, so we'll take another four millimeter off. I did forget to do is just give it a quick double check for square. Yep, spot on. So now we just have to turn it over and face the other side. First thing guys, quick rub on all the edges with a file. Fuck any sharp bits off. So I don't like to use air, but it is handy to have. So now that we've got that one flat, that one flat, it should just be a matter of setting it down flat in the vise, holding it down, clamping it, couple of knocks to make sure it's tight, and lift him up. Away we go. Okay, so that's our block all machined up, all nice and square in the size. All we need to do is just a quick hit around all the corners, blocking the sharp edges off. And our next stage is to bore our holes out. So I'm going to leave this video here. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you liked the video, hit the like button. And um, yeah, let me know how we go. And we'll, on our next video, we'll work out. I'll show you how I go about boring them out. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, I'll see you next time.